your boy, I'm recording this on the newer MacBook, so I can't mess this up, and I can't re-record this, and I can't do anything except look at this particular song, Pofu, Deathbed. Now, you think about preeminent uh, TikTok tracks, you think uh, SS Tentacion, I don't want to do this anymore, Doja Cat Say So, uh, The Bots by Roddy Rich, uh, Zay HD going double balsa wood, not ever being mentioned again, other than TikTok. Whoever those two people are, Zio, Geo, whoever, who, who is he? Who cares? Um, that's the two people. I think it's Zio HD and CEO or something like that. Anyway, um, so we have Deathbed, which is also on the preeminent uh, TikTok tracks, and it is good. TikTok has put me on to some music. Not much, because I don't use TikTok much, but typically, if there's a song that's hot on TikTok, everybody does a TikTok on the TikTok. TikTok. And De Deathbed is no different. It's a very melodic beat, very reminiscent of uh, Jocelyn Flores by Estetacion. Um That was actually produced by a gang guy named Putsu. This was a song by a guy named um, Pope. Po Pofu, Pofu, yeah, Pofu. Um, and shout out to this side. I mean, this site, this site is the pinnacle of straight up coffee music. And we'll, I mean, Grimes, uh, song named Ramona Flowers, uh, Yumi Zama, that just sounds overpriced coffee ish. Eve's Tumor, I've heard about that name before. I've got to listen to that joint. And we transition that to be a Badoobie. Be a Badooby, uh, who I believe is the background female vocal on this song. I listened to like one song by her before I did this, and I wish I listened to more so I could more easily be able to tell you about Be a Dooby, Be a Badooby. Uh, so Be a Badooby. <laughs> Yo, man, shout out to Bedroom Pop, man. Bedroom Pop artists have the fucking craziest aesthetics. And it's not intentionally crazy. It's just off the wall. Uh, Kitty, uh, the person that Claro bit Pretty Girl off of. It's just such crazy vibes that they go with. And I don't even like the word vibes, but that's it's just so simplistic and so Tumblr-ish. But it's 2020, not 2012, so it's just it's uh, anachronistic, I suppose. If you watch this video, you know what anachronistic means. You know, give it a like, please. So coffee is the 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 hook that is interpolated into the song. Uh, the as we go to the lyrics here, don't stay away for too long. Don't go to bed. I'll make a cup of coffee for your head. It'll get you up and going out of bed. I sound like fucking Fantano the way I've got that one out. Um, yeah, I mean it's just a good ass song. I don't know what to say. I you think about a a, a white guy that kind of like. Is a rapper like how do you catch the 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 pocket as far as becoming relevant? In a certain period of time, it was frat rap. At a certain period of time, it was lyrical rap. That maybe that still is the way for most guys to get by. But we, for I say the mid two thousand tens, we had SoundCloud rap where you know your fat nicks, your puyas, your peeps. They had emo rap. And while this isn't that type of emo rap, and it really isn't like anywhere near as visceral as that lane of rap, this is, I, I mean, this is white person emo rap. So it does fit within the same way. It's not SoundCloud emo rap. It's not popping perkies and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know. I mean, I just think this... So, you know, I tried to find, like, what's the inspiration behind this joint, right? Because we have all these different articles. Uh, you know, the song delivers two things, which of one being the narrative writing is distributed to the breakup. And, you know, it appears to me that this person, uh, this song was down for an entire year. Jesus Christ. Um, wow. So... I, I guess that th this is how I would say it's a metaphor. The deathbed 
it's kind of now him watching this girl that he still loves do her thing with him basically now out of the scene, out of the box. So he's not literally dead, but metaphorically speaking, I think there's certain bars that allude to this. Uh... I wish it could be me, but I won't make it out of this bed. I hope I go to heaven so I'll see you again. My life's kind of short, but I got so many blessings. Hope, happy, reminds, such is always ending. I think that kind of, it's alluding that, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy to understand, but I just want to make this video seem worthwhile. The bed being the bed, but it's not him going to bed because he's, like, dying. It's because his heart is broken. And heaven, in this instance, is... I guess kind of a return to some kind of relationship with this woman. Not it may even it, you could literally be happy. He could literally kill himself or something like that and want to see her again in a pure sense. But I think that it's just him get a situation where he could be close to this girl again without her man being in the way. My life's kind of short. I think it's kind of their relationship was short. Um, and this is kind of just nostalgia. I mean, this this really more solidifies theory that it's just a metaphor than anything. Uh. Soon you'll be alone. It's hard. You have to lose me. Yeah, when I when I first heard that, I was kind of like thinking to myself, like this is a. Uh, it's kind of like very self indulgent by the by the artist to say this, but I kind of I kind of see where he was going with in that because, you know, you are losing him, and, you know, it it could be a metaphor for one of his relationships. It could also be just him wanting to pin a situation that came to his head, such as someone dying or dying of an early death and losing out on their first love. That's, I mean, that's something that I think people think about when they go off their first love. They think that what if this ends early, not necessarily because of death, but because of whatever. And, I mean, you know, I think that's kind of what I would believe this to be, just kind of him presenting the scenario that I think we all kind of figure just a little bit of streaming and, at most. But yeah, uh, I think that's about it. I really don't know what else to do with this. Uh, it's, a, it's a great song. I mean, uh, Bedroom Pop has a lane. This is the first Bedroom Pop rap I've heard that isn't by a Bedroom Pop artist. Kitty is pretty much the... I think she's the, the really one of the lead-offs to Bedroom Pop. Um, and she did rap, so I mean... I'd, I'd have to think to myself that, like, she pretty much introduced Bedroom Pop, and from there, I think that, uh, I don't think I've heard anybody else rap. Cassie made an album called Bedroom Pop. That's pretty funny. Uh, maybe it's a return of form for her. But, yeah, I think that's about it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. hope you enjoyed this song. I think it's a really good song. I know it, like I said, 2012 Tumblr-ish, uh, fucking emo, fake emo golf type of like like um surface level emo ish type of vibes. It's not. It's saying a lot, and maybe some people say it's saying a lot, but saying a little at the same time. I I think it hits the emotions. I think that is a very well put together song. I think the the tracky sample from Be a Doobie is perfectly fitting within the theme he's going for. I like it. Peace.